life we're looking for. How do I make a life worth living in return with having? When I record my daily audio cast, I'm always educating people about where their boundaries in this world begin and end. If your life is not headed in the direction that you choose it to go into, that is not always your fault. It could be a situation like mine where I had identity theft, fraud, and cybercrime impact my life. I didn't do anything wrong is fairly truthful because I was living a life, I was having a business in a community, and I was fairly well known in my networking circles. What we are looking at is an overpopulation of people who want to become instant experts in things that they actually know nothing about. The reality is that you make an instant opinion the minute you see someone or meet someone, and a lot of times it's not right. I have done that once or twice in my lifetime. And the first time I did it was probably when I was very young and it was in my youth and I chose some of the wrong people to play with and hang out with. The second time I did it, I was actually an adult and I was going to a networking event that I was graciously invited to by an interesting group of people. And I was welcome to go because of its location along my destination or on my time management schedule, but at the same time I was sort of curious about what would be handled and how things would go because I was in the middle of deciding about how to revitalize my own personal networking forum. And as, as any person who's running a business, running a philanthropic organization, running a volunteer tips organization, you have to know what the competition is about and what they're doing and whether or not you can make actual fellowship and friendship, if you will, or colleagueship or com camaraderie with other people's groups. And I have always found that it's much easier to be a comrade to someone and support their group by funneling people towards them that are right for their target market as opposed to being in conflict with them. What I did was important in that day. I learned a great deal about myself and I learned a great deal from God about how stupid I felt in that immature, sort of quick access view at someone that I fell madly in love with. But that's okay. That person has been a moral person, is truthful. That person runs a quality business, is probably in insightful for you. But who that person is, is only known to me. And I can talk this way about a lot of people that I've met when I've been out in a networking community. The conversations that men have with men are not quite the same conversations that men have with women. I have learned that quite well. Even though there are books out there by Ivan Meisner, who's an, the executive leader at this time of BNI chapters across the world, he makes a living basically through relationship marketing or network marketing I mean, of groups that they pay a, a fee in order to participate in networking. And those networking responsibilities in that group actually have actual accountability for their members. And if members don't play well, they get basically moved out of the group. It was a little bit like that in my volunteer organization, but what I tried to do was steer people clear of my organization if I assessed that they would not play well with the others in the group or they didn't have anything additional or new to share with them. Because the people in my group were pretty sophisticated. They were pretty interesting, they were pretty kind, and they are pretty thoughtful with each other. I'm not sure how much business they passed back and forth with each other. We did occasionally allow a couple people from the same industry only because they decided to play well. We did have one gentleman who was sort of a holy roller Christian who really just kind of pissed on everybody in the group. And after his presentation, we kind of let him go. We never really told him that. We just sort of facilitated that so that the longtime standing member in that same industry could literally go on and flourish. At least that was our hope for her if she was willing to sow the seeds of encouraging people to enter into the group and visit the group. We had a standard set of members, but we always welcomed other people who were speakers, and we always encouraged people that we met in regular networking circles around, around the community. And by that time, after my first uh, group scored and launched the whole concept in the community, as I've always been an early adapter, there was plenty of groups to choose from, plenty of people to interact with. And the truth is who we choose to play with in life in terms of our networking circles are the ones that make our life. And if you're making a life that's in poverty, it's probably because the people that you're networking with, the people that you're socializing with, are the people that you're actually playing, laying, and staying with. Apologize for the uh, constant use of rhyme, but it's absolutely true. Who your strategic alliance is, your actual life partner is, who your profitable partnerships are, make your life. And when a person leads a group and says, we introduce you to business and all this sort of stuff, but you go to them and you say, point blank, I need you to invite, introduce me to two new clients so I can survive this thing I'm being attacked with, and when they say no, well, that's on them because it means they're not doing a good show and they f have false advertising out there. There are advertising laws. You see, the thing I try to teach to young people who are marvelous to me and often aren't kind to me is this world of America is founded on two predominant principles, laws and love. 
the laws tells us our roles, rules, and responsibilities and the lines in which we have to, literally the lifelines in which we have to stay and play in our industry and for our career, for our, us to be able to have a living and earning and literally be able to last year after year in our needs and our wants and our hopes for ourselves and our families and whoever we choose as family of choice. We also have that concept of love, which is often touted this month, apparently, for the reality of its diversity. But love is one of those agape things that God gives to us, and we can love on people even if we work with them. We can be caring for people even if we live near them and have to be neighborly, but we have to decide very carefully who we want to choose as our life partner. And when I made a profound prayer to the Lord, I literally got the two prayers that I made that were very profound and on my knees completely and utterly totally answered so quickly and so swiftly that I couldn't get over it. And I literally have not been the same after those love relationships, those friendships, those ideal mates came into my life. I am definitely someone who misses my late Japanese wife and I certainly miss my son. But I don't have to continue to talk about that, but I do know that I'm now a granddad of some bilingual, probably, children, and that's okay by me. In life, we have an investment we make in our children. And if we train them right, and if we love them through tight and difficult situations, they almost always turn out right in the end in adulthood when they are fully 100% responsible for making their own living and making their own way in the world. But there are always going to be sibling sets who are jealous of other people who don't quite make it or who choose the right life partners and sometimes choose the wrong life partners. And that's not on any person who's an individual, not a part of that coupleship. It's just what happens in life. In life, we have moments of time to look around our life in America, thank God, and make a change. There are people who go who skyrocket from absolute poverty to incredible wealth overnight because they luck out. They hit the right lottery ticket. They make a move in their career. They find a different group of people to play with, and they definitely find a different level to love or to stay with. And once they make those changes, their whole life shifts because it might be more pleasing to God than what they're doing right now. The oddity of the world is that people think their own countenance and their friend's countenance are the best thing in the world. And I say, look around at your friends and see what they're living at. If they're not living at the lifestyle that you want them to be at, if they're not living at the lifestyle that you long to be at, then probably you need to start social networking, learning the social skills of how to do that. There's plenty of books you can borrow from the library, and there's most definitely videos online if you follow the right person. There's a lot of bullshit online, too, and people who've made monstrous killings by just being the right look, the right feel, the right Ken, right Ken doll, the right Barbie doll, apologize to that company, but openly, you know what I mean, that they just have it in their visual aspect so that whatever they start to say of intelligence that they probably learned from someone else just makes a million. And I've had that happen to me. I gave a suggestion to a young man and he literally took it to millions. He was already sort of popular online and I gave him a suggestion of, hey, if you just kind of sort of amortize this payment and really help people, they might be a lot more willing to jump in with you. And he did that, but he never gave anything back to me. I also worked with and studied a little bit under Eamon Pagan, who I really like as an individual in terms of how he approaches life and how he's not kind of a shitbag in life, despite the way he got his original originations and money. And he really had a, uh, a need in men, and that was really sort of funny to a lot of people. But he also taught me a really great secret formula. And when I did that formula, I was so allegedly someone who was going to win a computer. I never got that computer for that man, so that maybe changed my whole life and my whole stance on whether or not I would really wholeheartedly recommend him. You see, in life we have moments of time to recommend people, and there's only a handful of people that I would still, at this moment in time, fully and wholeheartedly recommend, because I know them, I know how they have lived, I know how they grow, I know how they handle their family, and it's marvelous if you're a party animal and you like to go out and drink a lot of wine and have a lot of great time, because maybe your fellow is in that industry, but the reality is if you're a shitbag to people, if you're unkind to people, if you're uh, arrogant over people, you try to put Lord in people's lives, it's eventually going to come up and bite you in the ass. So the truth is that in life you want to do unto others as you would have do unto you, and that is a truly a Bible verse that works across in a lot of ways. And there's a different Wiccan way to say that, there's a different Druid way to say that, there's a different Pagan way to see that, say that. But in my Pagan world with my most uh, closest friends, I say something that my one of my dearest mentors and psychic friends with profound skills far better than mine taught me her name is Claudia and she says we do say love and light to people and I've understood from my readings since talking to her and her reminding me of how like, when you get up in the morning and you put your feet on the floor you need to thank God that you're still alive that openly it's where I put my altar next to my bed 
so that I would always be reminded of the love of the God that's in heaven. But love and light is just that. It's that agape love from God, the mother and father, mother and father, heavenly father, and divine mother of all the earth that created Jesus Christ and everyone else who's come forward regardless of their girth and openly at or their birth. And at this point, I'm not going to make any more rhymes. But the light is the light of the Lord of whatever you believe in as a divine architect in this incredible universe that we have as a man in this world and the truth is it's the light of the Lord that shines through you and should be shining upon other people to raise them up on the eagle's wings that they can fly into their destiny that the Lord has put in them as a calling and if you're not doing that with people if you're shitting on people if you're stealing from people if you're deleting things on people's computers I promise you you're going to end up in a lot of pain and a lot of time because God is not liking being pissed on by you and you probably have the COVID or you have a really serious form of flu because you failed to listen and you failed to heed warning and you failed to, failed to stop when your better friends told you, don't do this, it's not wise. People in life have the right to come from a family of origin that might be full of shit and bullshit and move into a family of choice that is full of love, light, and the world around them understands the passion that's within them.